Um, I'd like to introduce a lot of my family over here. I have all my brother and sister-in-laws here. Um, numerous nieces and nephews. Uh, I want to thank them all for coming. I appreciate them all being here. Uh, I have a cousin who came all the way from Maine because I am one of her two favorite cousins. <laughs> um, I also would like to introduce um, my mother and father-in-law. Um, they've been great to me as a son-in-law. Uh, they're just terrific people. Uh, Helen and George, if you please stand. I'd also like to now introduce uh, daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws. My um, son Jeffrey's wife, Heather, along with the Met Colin, um, Riley, my granddaughter, and Christopher, my grandson, that's right here. So. And my daughter Laurie's husband, Mike. Mike took Mary because she, she needs a nap. And her son, Michael. Uh, my son, Kevin's uh, wife, Kristen, and her daughter, Addie. <laughs> and then Daniel's wife, Amanda, Holden, uh, Dylan. <laughs> Of course, without the next person, life wouldn't have been the same. Uh, she did a great job bringing up our kids while I worked. She stayed at home raising and teaching them a love of reading, relaxing, and patience. <laughs> Things that I do not know anything about. <laughs> she has listened to me complain, moan and groan, and deal with frustrations. But that has been a two-way street. I have heard a lot about kindergarten and the Boston Public Schools. When our kids were young, she attended many CM events. While I chased students at athletic events and through the streets of Boston, she watched over the four kids. Once the kids were grown, her great love for HGTV, Ion TV, and reading allowed me to attend so many school events. <laughs> My wife, Joan. <laughs> I'd like to thank the brothers for their kindness, friendship, shown not only to me, but to my family as well. The many get-togethers held in the brothers' houses for holidays, starts of vacations, after a Friday night game, or the end of the school year. Through the generosity of the many superiors as we knew them, the Buddy Beckners, Bobby Burke, Willie Harris, Steve Cakey, Casey, and Kirk Phelps, acting as hosts. Guys like Fee Sheridan, Jay Crowley, and Jeff Ox, who loved to cook for those events, and they always put out a great spread. There were just so many great brothers, similar to Brother Cabot, Brother Phelps, and Brother Don Moss, who are stationed here now, that I have come in contact with during my time at CM. But especially a guy named Jim Timmon, who took a chance on me as an administrator. The one thing that he taught me that still sticks in my mind today. He always told me, never lose your cool on a Friday. It only ruins your weekend. <laughs> the many, many colleagues that I have worked with, I've learned from some of the best. Dan Burke, who first hired me as a coach at Christopher Columbus, and then who was instrumental in getting me the job at Catholic Memorial. The Jimmy O'Connors, Eddie McElhaney, Chris Jackson, Jerry Fortin, Gus Andrews, Jake Lyons, Tommy Ma, Joe Perfetti, Phil Tracy, and Tommy Robinson. They were all the veteran guys when I first came to CM. And along with the brothers, were instrumental in building the foundations of CM. And the others who I've worked along the side, like Phil Genitasio, Joe Hurley, Vinnie Catano, and Maggia, 
Tommy Beatty, and Bob Teagan. We were the younger crew at that time, the people who were involved in all the activities with the students. All of those teachers also had a great impact on the lives of generations of CM Knights. I have enjoyed working with them as well as the other numerous colleagues who are still here or who have gone on to work in other places. It has been a thrill to work beside graduates of Catholic Memorial that I have taught. Right now there are 16. It has been a, again, great for the school to bring them back and watch them grow as professionals, giving back in many ways to a place they love. Then there was Paul Capilupo. <laughs> when I first came to CM, there was not a great friendship. Believe me. CCAP was the CYO president at St. Teresa's and I at Sacred Heart. Bitter rivals at the time. But it worked out, he became my closest friend. Attending each other's family events, such as weddings, parties, cookouts, football trips, or just a night out with our wives. Many, many laughs with Cap, both inside and outside of school. We did accept many challenges for a game of two-on-two -two basketball. Of course, I would have to rebound, he would have to shoot. <laughs> many students occasionally would want to make a friendly wager for a sub. In attempt to be congenial, we never refused. And as he said, we never lost. <laughs> Golf hours, where our scorecard sometimes was challenged. Most of those people never heard of Mulligans. <laughs> One thing he taught me, make sure your golf pencil always has an eraser. <laughs> I know he always had my back, especially on a bad day, as well as a small glass of scotch. Sometimes multiple glasses of scotch. <laughs> the staff here at CM has always been great, from the maintenance crew, the nurses, and all the people in the cast. And as they say, behind every great man, there is a great woman. While at CM, there have been many great women. The Nancy Grahams, Ann Flanagan, Sue Timmons, Anne Marie Cahallon, Taryn Luckner, Nancy Robinson, Celia Susi, Elena Jamian, Marlene Stout, Eileen Semesky, and Sheila Joyell. They made my job easier and made me look good. And one of my greatest supporters, Alice McConnell, who was my longtime assistant when I was the dean. She made me look great. She was sharp. In an instant, she knew what absent notes or early dismissal notes were real and what were forgeries. <laughs> she knew when it was a girlfriend calling a guy in sick, not his mother. <laughs> and she would always knew when someone was in a pile of trouble. And she would say to me, remember Mr. Chisholm, he's a nice boy. <laughs> During my time as an administrator, I've worked with many talented people, none more dedicated to CM than Hal Carey, Tommy Ryan, and especially Jimmy Keene, who has been beside me for the last 15 years and has much to do with the success of the school during that time. I have been fortunate to work alongside many headmasters and the five presidents, learning different things from each one, each one having unique talents, each one putting up with my stubbornness, but all of them working to make CM a better place. And all of those talented people could have worked at other places, but we all believe in what we do and have a great love for CM and the boys a thing that makes CM a special place. I've been fortunate to come in contact with many wonderful parents, members of the board of directors, both past and present, who support and sing the praises of Catholic Memorial. Having through the race to the top, Gold 2000, Leave No Child Behind, Common Core, all ideas for education, which is continually changing. Thank God the one thing that never changed here was the type of kids who are CM. They made the job worthwhile. 
My most enjoyable years were those when I was the dean. It was a thrill watching young boys come in, make mistakes, grow up, move on, and become successful in life, marry and have children. It doesn't matter if they're a politician, a banker, a lawyer, teacher, cop, fireman, plumber, or carpenter. If they're happy, we're happy for you. And it is very rewarding for all of us here at Catholic Memorial when a graduate who has the opportunity sends his son to CM. It says a lot. There is no more prouder moment for CM when at graduation, having a father and son stand together and be recognized and honored as graduates of Catholic Memorial. I want to thank John Tobin. He's just one example of that CM kid. He was a hustler from the day I met him. <laughs> he worked for me for many years as the secretary of the summer school program. Some years he was a client. <laughs> but he went on to do great things in Boston and now at Northeastern. Married and he and his wife Kate are raising two young boys. He, like many, is a CM success story. That lasting bond that develops between a graduate and their teachers is another great characteristic of Catholic Memorial. It was not always easy. There were many tough situations that we faced together with the tragic loss of a number of students, either while at CM or as young alumni and the sudden loss of faculty members like Joe Hurley, Jake Crowley, Jeff Hawks, and Pat Walsh. But in those times, the CM community would always rally around each other, faculty, staff, alums, and parents, all helping each other through those tough times. Another great characteristic of CM. But surrounding those tough times, there were many great and funny times. As Dean, the days were filled with challenges. The biggest was to make sure everyone served jugged once and did their time in room seven. In case any of you have forgotten, there are still 222 bricks on the back wall in room seven. <laughs> What else could you do while sitting there? Sometimes standing, if you get caught talking, staring at a wall. Some guys were easy to catch. The smokers behind the dumpster coming out from lunch. Those windows on the stage gave me a great vantage point. In those days, you didn't have a choice at lunch. The meal was the meal. Maybe that's why the lunch line's so slow now. So it was easy to catch those who were sneaking off the campus to the Superette to get a sandwich at lunch. God, they had great sandwiches. <laughs> the ease of catching the crew that had the party at the comfort in in Dedham. Thanks to the kid who will remain unnamed, who just happened to drop his CM progress report in the hotel room. <laughs> the senior, or the seniors, who for a senior's prank stole a purple hippo from a local daycare and put it on the roof of one of the outside classrooms. At that time, we had cameras. <laughs> so while watching, I just started laughing. <laughs> Even though they had their hoodies on, you could tell in a second who it was by the silhouettes of their body. <laughs> they told me that the most embarrassing part was re returning the hippo to the daycare when all the little preschoolers were there. <laughs> As they put the hippo back, all the preschoolers kept asking their teachers, are these the boys who stole the hippo? <laughs> as always, some teachers, as well as students, would give up somebody else 
just as a joke to make sure they served Jared. But it became so easy when the middle school came into existence because those little guys will give up anyone to serve this I just had a look at them and they would start confessing everything. Some were harder. It took a while to catch the driver of the truck in the hippo caper, <laughs> but I finally caught him, took a picture of his truck, and put it in the graduation video, <laughs> so he would know I know. <laughs> Larry Calderon, who would sneak off campus during his lunch and drive to McDonald's, and then would sneak back and he would leave me a hamburger on my desk <laughs> to let me know he had gone. Took a while, but I got him. <laughs> Sebastian Andreas, who challenged me in May of his senior year about never serving Judd. I loved the challenge. <laughs> I caught him fooling at graduation practice. Some of the favorite things I would do Room seven was always quiet after school. So it was easy that this would always happen. Every so often it was <laughs> someone would fall asleep. I would quietly go around the room and get everybody else to leave. And I would let the kid sit there and sleep until he finally woke up. When he did, I would always tell him, it's, it's five. <laughs> In today's world, it's tough catching kids doing things wrong with those iPads and those laptops. A click of a button and it's gone. During my time, there was no delete button. It wasn't available. Every so often, a guy was caught with one of those magazines in school. The crowd at the locker usually gave it away. I knew they weren't exchanging class notes. I would bring him into the office after jug, take the magazine out, throw it across the desk, and tell him, bring us home. I don't care whether you show it to your father or not but your mother has to sign it <laughs> and it has to be brought back to me the next day. That usually resulted in a tremendous look of fear. <laughs> they would always please, oh no, not that. I will do anything. That's when I would warn him. If I catch you again, that's what will happen. I never had a repeat offender. <laughs> My first year as dean, a kid did come back from his unchaperoned spring trip, which the school was always against, and told me there was a rumor that I was at the airport when the trips were leaving, taking names of CM kids, like I would spend my time doing it. <laughs> so because I had better things to do, I would always find out when the spring trips were leaving and on what airline, and on what terminal. Then about an hour before the flight would leave, I would call Massport and ask to have myself paged <laughs> for an emergency phone call in that specific terminal. Just part of the reputation. I want to thank Susan Griffin and Steve Holt for the article in the magazine. But the quote, his face as serious as always, rarely cracks a smile. It's just part of the masquerade. I do have a great sense of humor. <laughs> For example, on the cover of the magazine are the twins, Darius and Marcus Gladson. I am convincing them it'd be all right and they would not get in trouble if they switched classes on April Fool's Day. <laughs> On a slow day, I would look for the right kid and ask him, can you do a favor for me? Everyone loved doing a favor for Mr. Chisholm. I need you to go to this room and tell this teacher 
that Mr. Chisholm needs to see just in case right now. <laughs> Most times, the student would just come back smiling and say, that's funny. <laughs> but there were times the kid would come back with a message from the teacher saying, I don't have him in my class. <laughs> from the first grade through the 12th, I was taught by the Sisters of St. Joseph. Needless to say, I gave them a run for their money. When I would bump into a former teacher, they would ask, what are you doing now? And I would say, I'm a teacher. They would just smile. When I said I was the Dean of Students, they made the sign of a cross. <laughs> when I was appointed principal, most rolled over in their grade. <laughs> I don't think it's what I learned in school that helped me. It was what I experienced that helped me become successful. I never planned becoming a teacher. It was the last thing on my mind. Funny how things work out. I want to thank Peter Folan, Paul Sheff, Nancy Graham, Liz O'Connell, and the people from development who put this time together. I'm overwhelmed for the amount of people that are here, and I want to thank you for coming, and thank you for supporting the scholarship. I want to thank the graduates who are part of that scholarship committee. I want to thank the Boston police who are outside and Cap Gillespie um, for their help today. Uh, it's been a busy day around here. Uh, they had the road race this morning run by the uh, Bly family, graduates of Catholic Memorial, that make um, a lot of money and support many, many things in the Parkway area. So it's been a, a busy day for the, uh, for the police. And I have been very friendly with the police throughout the years. <laughs> for me, CM has been a great place. And for most graduates, let's see, say CM was great for them. So as I leave, I ask one favor of the community. When I started here, there were 28 brothers. And they made great things happen. Today we have three. For CM to continue to do great things, there is a need for the support of generations of young men to give back to the school they say they love, either with their talent, their time, or their treasure, to help with financial aid, addition of classroom space, fine art venue, and athletic facilities, to help assure the future generations of Knights from CM, exper the CM experience will become a reality for them. I'll finish with some lines from one of my favorite songs. Uh, if I could, I would sing. But the sign of a smart administrator is know your limitations. <laughs> well, here it is. My time has come. Won't be long. I'll be moving on. All the good times that I've had, much more good than bad. What more can I say? We'll meet again, I hope and pray. Now I'll be on my way. Thank you. <laughs>